What's going on everybody? Valhalla Dev here, quickly becoming a Rust-only developer. Today we're going to talk about backend APIs with Rust, specifically the poem underscore API or poem crate. As I mentioned in another video linked above, I've been rewriting my startups backend in Rust. It's been an absolute blast. I love the framework that I'm using, which we're about to get into, and just the experience of creating strictly typed APIs is just, it's amazing. It's been a really fun experience, as even this mess of folders is cleaner than the Golang microservices and the Golang microservice architecture that I've been using. It's a disaster. I've been using poem underscore API or open API, or I'm just going to call it poem for my backend, and I wanted to explain a bit about why and how to use poem. First, poem underscore open API creates REST APIs that are OpenAPI v3 compliant, which means that you literally get Swagger API docs for free. You don't have to do anything. You just get the docs. Trust me when I tell you creating like API doc stuff, pages on a startup is an absolute pain in the ass and you absolutely don't want to do it if you can avoid it. So this feature alone honestly is enough to convince me to go with something like this, but there are plenty of other reasons. The mode of developing a poem API is pretty neat, and once you get through some of the Rust quirkiness, you'll dig it. Or you won't. I really don't care. You can go back to writing things in Express, if that's really what you want to do with your life. So, let's talk about the cargo. I'm using this cargo because it is what I was able to pull from the docs. It probably is wrong, and is probably using old versions, but it works, as you can see here in a second. Um, so, who cares? Let's talk about the code. So if we pop over here to VS Code, we can see a couple of different pieces here. We've got our imports right here. We are importing most of our stuff from poem underscore open API crate, um, but we're also going to be using um, just the base poem crate for our TCP listener and our routing. Um, so poem underscore open API is the stuff that gets you the swagger docs and basically what you're going to be using you know, most of the time while Poem is the base crate that you're going to use for your listeners and routes and things like that. If we go down to our main function, all of this stuff uses Tokyo under the hood, which is basically a crate that allows you to run concurrent thread fast stuff. Um, that's about all you're going to get from me because I haven't done enough research into it. And if you're familiar with writing API stuff, or just you know, back in things in general, you'll recognize several different pieces of this. We're creating a server component that um, specifically loads on a, a an API endpoint here. Um, we are loading in with a specific port. Um, we are creating a name for our API, a version for our API. Um, the rest of this stuff may look a little bit new. So this API struct right here, we're going to talk about here in a second, that's essentially going to be how we implement our routes. We are also going to be implementing a swagger underscore UI function right here, or we're going to be calling a swagger underscore UI function right here so that we can get our swagger API docs. We're going to see that here in a second. We're going to load it at the uh, base directory here so that we can you know, fairly easily find our um, API docs. Um, and then we're going to start our listener and bind it to 3001. So that all should seem fairly familiar if you've done any backend stuff um, basically in any other language. It all looks pretty similar. If you haven't, this is all fairly cut and dry. This is kind of the typical stuff that you're going to be doing whenever you create a backend REST API. Now, what is new is this API struct right here. We are creating this API struct or, or you know, basically instantiating um, this API struct right here. Um, and then we are going to actually implement it or create functions on it right here. If you're not familiar with Rust, Rust has a fairly unique approach to allow you to do some object-oriented type things within Rust without actually having full object orientation support, if that's the correct way to say it. Um, basically, what Rust likes to do is create the data structure separately from creating the data methods. So here we've got the actual you know, creation of the API variable. We could initialize several different um, data, you know, pieces of data within it, but right here within our implement block, this is where we actually create our functions. We are using an OAI attribute to define our route. Our route is going to be found at slash hello, and we're going to use the get method on this route to run the handler function, which is directly 
below the attribute. So this index function is going to be called basically every single time you hit the slash hello route. Now, if we look at the input to this index function, we see query option string. Now, if we start in the very, you know, inside of, you know, this definition, um, which is defining, you know, a, the, the type for our name variable here, we see that we have a string. It is optional, so we may or may not get that string. This string might be null or it might be a string. And we are going to wrap this within the query, which we import right here from poem underscore open API. What this means is we are going to try to pull the name key from the query within our URL because this is a, a get function. There's no post body or anything like that to pull from. And what we are going to return is the a string within a plain text wrapper. So we are just essentially going to be returning a string. Now, before we even get into what this code does, Let's go back and look at our Swagger API docs, and I'll show you kind of why I find this really cool. Well, let me start up our server first. Start it with cargo run. It is started. We reload. And here we've got our Swagger API docs. I didn't have to do anything except for create my API in order to get these API docs. We basically get them for free. So we look at our hello route, and we see we have a query with a key of name. And if we click try it out right here, we can put something in that name. So we're going to put in a string Mitch and we execute it. And if we look down here, we've got our response body, which is hello Mitch. Now the reason why it's important that this is optional is we could get rid of this, have null within that name key and we get hello. If we look, go back and look at our function body, we've got a match. So what this match is doing is it is looking at name.0, which is just going to be the actual, um, the actual option. And we are going to look at that and say, is this an actual string or is it null? If it's null, it's just going to return hello with an exclamation mark. If it does find a string here that we passed in, it is going to format a hello message and give us that hello message. Now, instead of doing it within the Swagger API docs, we could do this within a normal get request. So we can do this slash API slash hello and do name equals Mitch and we get hello Mitch. And like you probably saw in my recommendations, you could also screw this up intentionally and we just get hello. So basically we, we functionally get our error handling for free here just by this pattern matching within Rust, which is really nifty. Now, this is a basic way to set up a route. You could throw all of your routes within this implement API block here and be totally fine. One of the reasons why I love Poem is finding out that I could throw my routes within different files and just export them within a structure. So let me show you what that means. Instead of passing an API within this instantialization of the open API service, I'm going to pass in endpoints. If we look at endpoints, endpoints is a um, tuple that contains API, which is our original API routes up here, as well as some API routes that I exported within the user within the user module. So if we go up here to our user module, this is where I can create new API routes. So I've actually got some unused imports here. We don't need that. We don't need that. And we don't need that. Um, so if we look here, we are creating a public structure, so this is something that we can export from our module, which is called user API. We are creating a structure here that we are going to use for both return, um, basically for input and for output, and we're implementing our routes here. So these are the routes that we're actually that are actually going to get passed back to our main.rs um, file. So we're just creating one route, and if we run this, rerun our server here, now that we have actually implemented that, and we go back to our Swagger dogs, we can see we now have a new route. This new route is being created within this module, which is, again, you get this stuff for free. It's super nice, and you're about to have your mind blown, because we created this structure here, and we said within our handler function, we are going to have this structure be wrapped in a JSON struct, and we are going to use this as input to our API route and as output for our API route. So if we go back to our route documentation, 
we can see the request body has to be structured this way. This is our example value or our schema right here. This is how our data has to look when it's being inputted. And here's what you're going to get as an output. All of this is documented very, very easily. Again, for free, essentially. All we have to do is define our structure within, you know, the, um, within our code. So if we go back here, we look at our structure. We've got an ID, which is optional. We've got our name, a color, and our hair color. Um, so just think of this as like our favorite color, our name, some arbitrary ID, and then our hair color. If we look at the implementation of this route, it's fairly simple. We are going to completely ignore whatever ID they pass in, replace it with 420, and then return our user. So because that ID is optional, we don't actually have to pass it in here. So we can get rid of that, execute this, and we will get a full user back with that ID of 420. We could also keep it in and overwrite it or write in leet, execute it, and that will get overwritten. So again, the cool part of this is not necessarily what I'm doing with these routes. These routes are very, very basic. The cool part is how it's all structured, the way that you get your API documentation for free, all of that. I, I really just cannot stress enough how awesome it is that you can functionally get your Swagger API docs completely for free. So let's move on. I'll be covering a bit more poem stuff over time as I use it more. I'm not a master at poem by you know any stretch. I've just kind of started grasping the basics of it, but I'll definitely be covering it more over time. It's a neat framework and it seems wicked fast. Now, I haven't done any kind of like in-depth testing on this, but from what I've seen at least, especially from what No Boilerplate has said about it, it seems like one of the faster frameworks and it's in Rust, so it's gotta be kind of fast. That's about it. Hope to see you next time. Peace.